The fact of eclipses implies that not all the distances to objects that we see in the sky can be infinite. For example, during a solar eclipse, the moon passes in between the sun and the earth. Therefore, the moon has to be a finite distance away from the earth, and perhaps the sun is a finite distance away from the earth. So how do you then determine the distance from the earth to these objects? Well, the first person to make any headway in answering a question such as this lived in the third century BC in ancient Greece. This person's name was Aristarchus. Aristarchus devises a means of determining the distance from the earth to the sun in terms of the distance from the earth to the moon. This is a relative type of measurement. So he devises a means of determining the distance from the earth to the sun in terms of the distance from the Earth to the Moon. So this is a relative measurement for that reason. Here is Aristarchus's method for making this calculation. Okay, so let's say that this right here represents the moon's orbit about the Earth. Let's say that the Earth is right here. Okay, now when I went through lunar phases in a previous lecture, if the moon, for example, is positioned right here in its orbit, and the sun is, for all practical purposes, infinitely far away, this then corresponds to first quarter. But not quite if the moon and the sun are a finite distance away from the Earth. For example, if the sun is right here, a finite distance away from the Earth, then first quarter moon is not quite going to occur here on the diagram. It's instead going to occur over here on the diagram, such that the situation forms a right triangle. The situation looks like this. Like so. And then right here, is first quarter moon. And there is a right angle right here that is formed on this diagram, thereby giving us right here a right triangle. Okay, now on this right triangle, Aristarchus labels the following. We first of all have the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Aristarchus did not know what that distance was. That measurement didn't come for a couple of centuries after Aristarchus. So then therefore, Aristarchus merely calls that distance one. And then right here, the hypotenuse of this right triangle is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. That's our unknown value, x. So let's say, for example, we go through the calculation I'm about to describe, and we figure out that x is, say, equal to 10. All that simply means, then, is that the Sun is 10 times further away from the Earth than the Moon is. That is what is meant by a relative measurement. This is how we then describe Aristarchus's calculation. Okay, now we could figure out what x is on this diagram if we could somehow measure or find this angle here, call this angle theta. We'll use a little bit of trigonometry in order to find x, specifically the cosine of the angle theta. So the cosine of the angle theta is equal to the adjacent side 1 divided by the hypotenuse x. If you then just cross multiply a little bit, x is equal to 1 over the cosine of the angle. The question, however, becomes, how do you measure the angle theta? Well, here's how Aristarchus makes this measurement. He says basically, okay, don't just take a look at the moon during first quarter, but take a look at it at third quarter as well. That's down here on the diagram. This then gives us, like so, 
another right triangle. Here is third quarter moon. Okay, by assumption, if we assume that the moon's orbit about the Earth is a circle, this then means that the two triangles here are congruent to each other. So they share the same hypotenuse. This side here is equal to one, and then therefore right here is the same angle theta like so. Now it seems like on the surface, and I'm making the situation more complicated by adding this second right triangle, but here's then why we do. What Aristarchus measures is he measures the time necessary for the moon to go from third to first quarter. And then he compares that then to the time necessary for the moon to go through a full set of phases 360 degrees on the diagram. That's 29 and a half days, a lunar month. By setting up a proportion, you can then figure out what the angle two theta is on the diagram. Here's how that proportion works. So the angle two theta on the diagram corresponds to the time between third and first quarter. That's what you actually measure. And this is then equal to, as a proportion, 360 degrees on the diagram per then a full lunar month, 29 and a half days, like so. So you measure the time necessary between third and first quarter. You do so in terms of days. You then do a little bit of cross multiplying here, and you ultimately then find the angle theta. Once you find the angle theta, you then plug it into here, and you then determine the value of x, the distance from the Earth to the sun, in terms of the distance from the Earth to the moon. Okay, now what was Aristarchus's result? Aristarchus' result for x was about 17. In other words, according to the best measurement that he could make, the sun is 17 times further away from the Earth than the moon is. How does his number compare with the actual value? Well, it turns out that Aristarchus was way off. The actual value is about 400. In other words, the sun is about 400 times further away from the Earth than the moon is. It's not surprising, however, why Aristarchus' result was poor. The reason for that is because of what he has to measure, the time necessary between third and first quarter. He can only come up with an estimate. There was no accurate means of measuring time more than 2,000 years ago. Measuring time accurately didn't come until relatively late in history. The calculation also ignores the fact that the moon's orbit about the Earth is not perfectly circular. It's an ellipse. That also contributes to Aristarchus's error. However, look at Aristarchus's method. His method is elegant. The reason why it's elegant is because all that he's recognizing is that what is present in the sky is geometry. It's a right triangle. And then therefore, if you can make a measurement of the angle theta, then it is a trivial matter to figure out what the value of x is. So Aristarchus's calculation, even though his result was way off, his calculation is considered to be elegant. Okay, that concludes this short lecture on Aristarchus.